Uh, Steve White runs the West Division of Comcast, headquartered here in Denver. He's got about 30,000 employees. And Steve insists that every meeting they have have an empty chair in the room because he wants his employees to have the customer present as a reminder that they are the center of every decision they make. And frankly, over the last year, we have tried very hard to follow the very similar principle. Have the person with arthritis at the center of everything we did. Not structure, not geography, not governance, but people with arthritis. In the next few minutes, it's this empty chair. And just like this chair is supported by four legs, so too are people with arthritis supported by our four pillars. So let's see how we did for these people. I want you to meet Chad Brower and his eight-year-old daughter, Courtney, of Warsaw, Indiana. They both suffer with ankylosing spondylitis and require biologics as part of their treatment. For more than a year, their doctors were prescribing one thing, but the insurance company insisted they had to first fail a series of other medications. The severe pain in Chad's hands cost him significant time at work, while young Courtney was suffering nerve damage in her legs and spine, causing her to fall often. She and her mom are Arthritis Foundation advocates. Courtney and Renda helped lead the charge for the passage of SB 41, giving healthcare providers in Indiana a clear course to appeal step therapy restrictions, helping Chad, Courtney, and more than a million other people in Indiana speed the delivery of medication they need to ease the pain. Recently, a patient attended a Living Your Yes with RA event in Boston with Dr. Susan Ritter of Brigham and Women's Hospital. The patient told us, and I don't know her name, but it doesn't matter. I recently moved to the area and had to find a new rheumatologist. I was struggling and relaying my pain, uh, struggling with relaying my pain using the existing pain scale. Then I found the Better Living Toolkit at arthritis.org. I used the health tracker to help put my pain in perspective. I learned ways to share information with my new rheumatologist who didn't yet know me well. I tracked my pain and functional status and was able to share it with my new doctor, resulting in a better relationship and more effective medication management. Since 1948, the Arthritis Foundation has invested nearly half a billion dollars in research. One of those investments was 16 years ago, more than $350,000 in the pioneering work of Dr. Chen Dong at the University of Texas. That work eventually led to the development of a new drug, secukinumab, initially for patients with psoriasis and approved by the FDA just 10 months ago for the treatment of adults with ankylosing spondylitis and psoriatic arthritis, a potent combination that my own son has. He has helped dramatically improve the quality of life for so many. Now, did we have an impact? You bet. 10-year-old Riley was diagnosed with systemic JIA a year and a half ago, and this summer attended her first conference. Her mom wrote to thank us. She said, when my daughter was diagnosed, the Arthritis Foundation was one of the first places we looked to for information and support. Little did we know, a year later, we would be granted such an amazing opportunity. Before attending the JA conference, I was completely unaware of how much I didn't know about my daughter's disease, the treatment options available, and the number of families suffering with this terrible disease who would soon become like family. Attending the conference gave me knowledge, empowered my daughter, and provided us with lasting connections with people who get it. She went on to say that thanks to several JA families, we were referred to a new doctor who was extremely proactive in Riley's treatment, and we are currently on the way to a better tomorrow. So on behalf of the Saposniks and hundreds of thousands of other families we've supported, again, I say thank you. I hope you will remember why we are here, this chair, the people with arthritis that you know, and the many, many millions more that you don't. Veteran JA mom Erica Nieto of Austin, Texas summed it up quite simply this summer at the conference in Phoenix. She looked into the eyes of a struggling newbie she just met and she said, I don't have to know you to love you. 